feel like they're my family. I know you do. Welcome. Well, they were Welcome my family, family, weren't they? <laughs> For all those years, nobody know, knew them or cared about them. Yeah. Yeah. And you were the caretaker. Yeah. How did a North Texas man become the caretaker of a family who died near the end of World War II? Well, it has to do with a letter that might have been lost forever had he had not found it in an estate sale desk. So if you think that sounds like a movie, well, now it truly is a documentary premiering this evening at the Dallas International Film Festival. And you know its director, our city political reporter Jason Whiteley joins us this midday and the festival's artistic director, James Faust. Uh, congratulations to you both. Thank you so much Thank for having us. Yes, this is now. a big deal. Uh, Jason, first of all, you actually know the man who had the desk, who found these letters. What was that like and how did we get to this point? Yeah, you know, we get story ideas all the time. And I got a story idea that this guy has this desk and we did a, a shorter story on it back in 2019. Mm -hmm. But come to find out, the, the guy who has this desk, he bought it in an estate sale for $25. It's not even the piece of furniture he wanted. He hears uh, it rattling, he finds a secret drawer inside and finds some old letters that detail the final week of World War II in Germany, German civilians. This is a picture of the, of the desk he has right now in his office in North Dallas, mm -hmm. and that's him, Tim Mallard, right there. But inside that secret drawer right there were these old letters, and they talked about how civilians, not Nazis, but civilians, Cleo, were taking their own lives because of the Russians who were coming in, conquering Germany at the time. They were committing crimes, they were raping women, they were looting, uh, and it just really details war crimes that happened 70 years ago. You know what, Cleo, we're seeing the same thing happen again right now in Ukraine. Right, this is, a, this is a tragic story of a Jewish girl and her parents. Yeah, she's, she's not actually Jewish. Her, uh, part of their family is, but they're, they're Protestant. And, you know, after this 13-year-old girl unfortunately gets raped, her mom gets raped by mm -hmm. Russian soldiers, the woman who writes the letters, who's a refugee, she gets raped as well. Um, the 13-year-old girl asked her father to, uh, to let us die. Please, please enact our suicide pact uh, because she didn't want to live anymore. Um, and it's, it, it is a detailed, graphic, intimate, look at their final moments in, the, in that war. It is, and unfortunately, it's history untold, yeah. right? Until now. No, no one's ever told it. We went back to Germany to shoot part of this. What's so surprising is, is that, uh, you know, people in Germany didn't know this story, and we weren't sure how they were going to accept us if they wanted us to come there, you know, right. these, these Americans to go over there and tell this, but they were very accepting. Uh, they were welcoming of the story, and a few people said, yeah, I'd kind of heard some of this stuff that was happening, but we put it all in, you know, in between all the other duties I have here, my mm -hmm. regular duties, yes. I had been working on this the last three years. I know you have. And it was kind of, uh, you know, on the back burner, a passion project, and we finally, um, uh, you know, finished it up, and, and James Faust and the Dallas International Film Festival were, were great enough to select this one uh, to premiere tonight at the, uh, the Alamo Draft House. Right, Senior James, you know, this is a whole decision-making process as yeah. to what films will make it into the festival, and mm -hmm. what made you want to choose this one? I, I, the, the untold story. I, I mean, you, mm -hmm. we've heard lots of stories, uh, uh, Holocaust stories. We've heard lots of things like this, but the the way this came about, finding these letters and then going to tell the story that you just it's unimaginable, and it, it it seems like something someone would make up for a Hollywood uh, actual movie, and yes. yet this is a reality. And I think people need to learn about these people. I mean, it's a, a story of survival, and you know, it needs to be told. I see this turning into a book as well, right? <laughs> uh, Jason, what are your feelings? I mean, what do you think people will come to the festival? And, and see this film and what are you hoping they they feel or, or they take away yeah I, I, honestly i'm usually in your chair so i'm a little nervous no you. you're on the other side <laughs> answering, you're on the other answering side. questions <laughs> but you know at, at the end of the day I, it, this is one of many great films mm -hmm. at the dallas international film festival I, i've been going as a participant as well too before ours even premieres tonight but i think it's important to shine a light on these war crimes that happened 77 years ago because they are still happening now. I got an alert on my phone the other day from CNN talking about how women in Ukraine right now are, are alleging that the same thing is happening. Mm -hmm. that they're being raped by, by Russian soldiers. So this is still happening today. And, and I'm just, I'm grateful that it's gonna be part of the Dallas International Film Festival and, and premiere tonight. So it's, if, if people can get a chance to join us tonight, it'd be fantastic, five o'clock's when it premieres. Are there any other highlights of the festival as well? Oh yeah, there's, yeah we've, we have over 76 films in the festival and we're halfway through, oh my God, I have three days left. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we've got a lot of great things. We're not just happening at the uh, Alamo Draft House of Cedars, we're also uh, having a screening of this movie called MVP uh, with uh, uh, Nate Boyer. It's happening at the Texas Theater. It's about uh, veterans and NFL players getting together and sort of uh, um, 
sort of coming together over their own PTSD. And there's going to be a lot of football players and basketball players at this screening because wow. the organizations, they help each other get through these things. We're also doing a screening at the Meyerson tomorrow night, uh, mm -hmm. the Ryan Anthony story. He used wow. to be the lead trumpet for the D DSO, mm -hmm. and then he passed away. And there's a, we're doing a whole event at the Meyerson with performances, and the movie's going to play. And yeah, and then we're closing out the festival on Thursday night with a movie called Retrograde, which is about our pulling out of the Afghanistan, uh, the U.S. pulling out of mm -hmm. Afghanistan. And we're going to have some of the Afghani generals are going to be in there. We've wow. got a, a movie called Jane uh, about uh, the Janes that were helping uh, women uh, with abortions back in the 70s and 60s. So yeah, there's a lot. You can catch everything at DallasFilm.org. I mean, we. The 76 films, over se almost 70 filmmakers in town from all over the world. We were just talking, yeah, these guys in from Mexico, they were just so happy to be here. So we're just loving, you know, that we can share Dallas with the world. You definitely are at this point, James. Uh, Jason, thank you so much for joining us here on Midday. Thank you, Robin. We do have some information to get out there so we can make sure people make it tonight. The Dallas International Film Festival will take place at Alamo Cedars. Now that is just south of downtown on Botham Jean Boulevard. Let Us Die premieres this evening at 5 o'clock. Please just go to DallasFilm.org for more information about the festival, which runs through Thursday.